want to welcome you as we gather on this 10th Sunday after Pentecost to worship our Lord. Let's begin with singing verses 1 and 3 of the hymn, Son of God, Eternal Savior. Let us rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy and gracious God, I confess that I have sinned against you, O Lord. Some of my sin I know, the thoughts and words and deeds of which I am ashamed, but some is known only to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask forgiveness. Deliver and restore me, that I may rest in peace. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading is from Exodus chapter 16. The whole congregation of the people of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness, and the people of Israel said to them, Would that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the meat pots and ate bread to the full. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I am about to rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day, that I may test them whether they will walk in my law or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather daily. So Moses and Aaron said to all the people of Israel, At evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your grumbling against the Lord. For what are we that you grumble against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you 
in the evening, meat to eat, and in the morning, bread to the full, because the Lord has heard your grumbling, that you grumble against him. What are we? Your grumbling is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, Come near before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. And as soon as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. And the Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the people of Israel. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quail came up and covered the camp, and in the morning, dew lay around the camp. And when the dew had gone up, there was on the face of the wilderness a fine flake-like thing, fine as frost on the ground. When the people of Israel saw it, they said to one another, What is this? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, It is the bread of the Lord has given you to eat. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from Ephesians chapter 4. I, therefore, a prisoner of the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it says, when he ascended on high, he led a host of captives and he gave gifts to men. In saying he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the one who also ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness, and deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. This is the word of the Lord. We rise to the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel is recorded in St. John chapter six. On the next day, the crowd that remained on the other side of the sea saw that there had been only one boat there and that Jesus had not entered the boat with his disciples, but that his disciples had gone away alone. Other boats from Tiberias came near the place where they had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. So when the crowd saw that Jesus was not there nor his disciples, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum seeking Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? And Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not labor for the food that perishes, but the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to be doing the works of God? And Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, 
that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, then what sign do you do that we may see and believe you? What work do you perform? Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, and as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus then said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, sir, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We join in professing our faith for the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, and thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue by singing verses 1, 4, and 5 of the Lamb. You may be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is from St. John chapter 6 where Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not labor for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. So far the text. So have you found satisfaction in your life? Or are you like Mick Jagger and the Rolling Stones singing, I can't get no satisfaction? I just like that song. 
In fact, when I was young, I was in a little band that had fun playing it. Not very well, but we played it. What a song. And there's a lot of people in life who who find on a day-to-day or whatever basis a lack of satisfaction. I'll never forget a vacation that my wife and I took when the boys were young. We went to visit her mother in Louisville, Kentucky. And while we were there, reservations were made at a place called Shaker Town. Now, Shaker Town was known for their agricultural capabilities and a wonderful way of, of producing food and meals based upon what they grew. So, of course, reservations were made so that we could eat. And I was excited. I said, wow, we get to eat a special meal at Shaker Town. It's going to be really nice. And we got there and we took the tour. We went to uh, eat our dinner. And the menu was brought to us. And adults had a choice, one of two entrees. One of them was called boiled dinner. The other one was liver and gravy on Texas toast. Now children were offered like hamburgers, hot dogs, mac and cheese, and french fries. And I'm sitting there thinking, I wonder if I can order the children's menu. But no, that's for children. Sally ordered the boiled dinner. Her mother ordered the boiled dinner. I won't tell you what I ordered. I'll keep that one for later. But I'm sitting there thinking, you know, isn't there anything else? You see, sometimes we find ourselves in a situation where what is offered to us isn't what we're looking for. Sometimes we see ourselves not receiving the, th- the satisfaction that we hope for. In Mark, the day before the event that we see in John's Gospel, Jesus had fed a multitude of well over 5,000 people using five loaves and two fish. And Mark states that they all ate and were satisfied. But now it's the next day. And guess what? They're hungry again. They need to be satisfied all over again. And Jesus knows it. He says, you're looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill. And he knows now they're there for more food. Give me more. Give me more. I'm hungry. That's how they look at Jesus. They look at Jesus as someone that, you know, a free meal. And because they're hungry, they're not satisfied. Maybe, maybe sometimes we're like that. Maybe we look more to Jesus to satisfy our physical wants and desires instead of leading us to recognize him as being able to satisfy a far greater need. You see, Jesus didn't come into this world simply to to satisfy our physical wants and desires, but to satisfy our spiritual needs, to give to us what we can't get for ourselves. He came to bring life. Jesus once said, I came that I would give them life and that they would have it more abundantly. And the the feeding of the 5,000 and the the, uh, multiplication of the loaves and the fish, that was all done so that maybe the people could see him as he really is, the son of the living God, Jesus, whose life and whose death and whose resurrection would give us eternal life. And by believing in him, we have that life, a life that doesn't end, a life that is truly satisfied by Jesus. But it's so easy to focus on the physical and ignore the spiritual. That's human nature. And people do that. We do that. That's why Jesus reminds us to to labor for that which lasts. Believe in the one who truly brings satisfaction. 
On that day at Shaker Town, yeah, my mother-in-law ordered a boiled dinner, my wife a boiled dinner, the boys, things that boy, I wish I could order, but I ended up ordering liver and gravy on Texas toast. I gotta tell you, I never liked liver. Growing up, my mother would make it about once every two or three months, and every time she made the liver and onions for my dad, my brother and I would just look at each other and eh, here's another one of those meals that we just can't stand to eat. It was horrible trying to eat the liver and onions. I think my brother used to cut it up and feed it to the dog. The dog always stayed on his side of the table anyway. And I would try to swallow that stuff and, and on that day or shake it down, I said, oh, I've had enough boiled dinner to, to last me a lifetime. So I tried the liver and gravy on Texas toast. And I took one bite. And I thought, wow, this is really, really good. I've never had liver like this in my life. Don't tell my mom. Wow, is this good. And I was truly satisfied with that meal even though it only lasted once, and I, I wish I could have it like that again. I don't know how they did it, but it was incredible. It was really incredible. You know, sometimes we have meals, a certain cuisine that they say that if you eat it, you're hungry an hour later. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. I'll tell you, I like that cuisine, and no, I'm not really hungry an hour later. I think that what I eat was sufficient, but the thing is, we go through life sometimes trying to find things to bring satisfaction. But the greatest source of satisfaction is to believe in Jesus and to know the blessings he gives to you. His presence, his love, his forgiveness, restoration back with God, even presence during difficult times. He is with us always. And he is the source of all that is good from God, Jesus, a life that brings life that never ends. In his name, amen. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. And the flowers on the altar are given by Susan Brady in honor of the birthdays of Summer Hyatt, Matthew Hyatt, Caitlin Hyatt, and Valerie and Jane Majano. The eternal light is lit in memory of Mary Claire and George by Debbie Morrow. In our prayers, uh, we pray for those who are under the doctor's care. For Kaylee and Kathy and Tim Yaden, Dale Kirby's brother Neil with stage four lung cancer, for Bill, who fell and broke his hip, and for Florence, 103 years old, who also fell and broke her hip. For Jean Gaudio, requesting prayers for her cousin Donna, facing a stress tests and heart issues. Brian, still dealing with injuries, suffered from a fall. Barbara, whose husband is having cancer surgery. Nancy, Nancy having cancer surgery. Mandy, having a second heart surgical procedure and also for Jean, who is having back problems. And for Michelle Brogy, a prayer of thanksgiving for a successful surgery and for continued recovery for her son, Dan. Susan Brady requested healing and strength for Russ, Marguerite, Terry, Dennis, David, Joe, and David. And Judy Kirchstein requested prayers for Tammy, who will start chemotherapy soon. Sharon Girardi requested prayers for the family and friends of Rosemary Barberry at her death. And from Susan Cosgrove, we pray for her and family at the death of her husband, Gary Cosgrove, last night. And Fritz and Esther Krampus requested a prayer of thanksgiving for all of their many blessings as they celebrate their 64th wedding anniversary on August 3rd, 2021. Let us rise as we continue in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, as you have provided for the Israelites during their journey through the wilderness to the land you had promised, give us confidence to trust in your promises and to look to your hand to provide all we need for this life and for the life to come. Lord, in your mercy, God and Father of all, 
Enable us to walk in humility, gentleness, and patience, that we would bear with one another in love and be eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, your mercies are new every morning. We thank you for the blessings you have given to Fritz and Esther as they celebrate their 64th wedding anniversary. Continue to bless their home with your presence and their hearts with your love. Lord, in your mercy. And show your mercy to the sick and hospitalized and those with special needs. We especially bring to you those under the doctor's care for Kaylee and Kathy and Tim, Neil, Bill, and Florence, Jean, Donna, Brian, Barbara, Nancy, Mandy, Russ, Marguerite, Terry, Dennis, David, Joe, and David, Tammy, and Dan. And also for those who mourn, the family and friends of Rosemary Barberi, and for Susan Cosgrove and family at the death of her husband, Gary. Oh Lord, provide doctors and nurses, nurses and other medical professionals to care for those who need health and healing, as well as comfort, peace, and strength to those who mourn. Lord, in your mercy. And Father in heaven, sustain the profit, proper use of the sacraments among us, that your church would continue to be blessed with your gifts of forgiveness, life, and salvation through the waters of holy baptism and through the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who truly satisfies, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
May the true body and blood of your Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. God's peace is with you. Go in his peace and serve the Lord. Amen. Let us rise. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Have a great week. Amen.